Most guys will never tell you this. And the reason they would tell you this is because maybe they still want to have sex with you. But a guy being turned off isn't about whether they'd have sex with you. It's about whether they'd have a relationship with you. Which is why this can be a bit difficult to spot. Because if a guy's turned off by you, you may not see a change in his behavior necessarily. So I'm going to give you that playbook right now. Before we get to that, my Claim Your Man program is now open. In this program, I guide you through step by step, right from the first date, how to get commitment from that guy that you're really into. So if you're seeing a guy or you'll be ready to get commitment for the next guy you're already into, enroll in the link below and I'll see you there. So the first major turnoff for guys that they will never tell you is too much drama. Now it's interesting because people a lot of the time are looking for that spark. They're looking for that chemistry. They're looking for that excitement. But what can happen a lot of the time is what people can interpret as chemistry is actually just a roller coaster of emotions. So one minute you guys are good and things are really amazing. Next thing you guys are off and you're not talking to each other. Maybe you block each other. You're arguing all the time and people get addicted to that adrenaline rush, addicted to that dopamine hit from going from being in a really bad place to being in a really amazing place with someone, which can then often mean that when they meet someone who's actually ready for a healthy relationship, someone who shows a level of consistency and vulnerability with them, it feels too safe and they get bored. How many times have we heard people say, oh, I'm just bored dating this person. This relationship is really boring. And so to cure boredom, they create drama. Now, do some guys create drama? Yeah, I think guys create drama unintentionally so. It's not usually because they're bored, it's usually because they just weren't thinking. However, there are some women who have fallen into the habit of creating drama because that's what creates the excitement for them. Now, here's the thing. If you're dating a guy who's lacking in emotional maturity, a guy who isn't looking for stability and isn't looking to have a safe environment within the relationship, then this is going to work really well on him. This is really going to keep his attention. You know, he's going to be really stimulated in, you know, having his experience with you and that maybe he won't find that anywhere else. However, that kind of guy usually brings a lot of toxic traits because they're attracted to an unhealthy type of relationship an unhealthy type of behavior. And often that comes hand in hand with toxicity. But if you meet a guy and you're dating a guy who is a high quality guy, he does have a high level of emotional intelligence and maturity. He does have experience, not just with women, but in life also. He has principles, morals, and values. That kind of behavior is gonna turn him off because he understands that having a drama-free relationship that is what is warming for him. And while it may be fun for one guy who's just looking for fun, the guy who's looking for something more serious and significant is going to choose a more kind, warming, and peaceful environment. The next thing that turns guys off is assuming he has the same communication style as you or expecting them to think exactly how we do. He's a different person. And truth is, generally speaking, most men tend to think quite differently to women, especially when it comes to dating and relationships. Men tend to lean towards thinking about things very logically in a very linear fashion whereas women within dating and relationships tend to lean towards awareness and empathy and nuance i can give you two perfect examples take a man a woman who live together right and let's say man doesn't wash the dishes and the woman she keeps asking him can you do the dishes and so he does but then she says oh but babe i want you to want to do the dishes and he's like hold on why would i want to do the dishes. No one was to do the dishes, but he does it because she asked him to. And that annoys her, that she has to ask him to do it. He should want to do it because for her, him wanting to do the dishes isn't because he wants to do the action, but it's because he is making an effort to contribute to household chores, which feeds into their relationship. For her, it's a sign of love from him because he wants to help out more. She knows, of course, no one enjoys doing the dishes, but for her, it's about what it means for him to do the dishes, about what it means in the effort that he makes. Same situation, but they see it very differently. The other perfect example is when a woman sleeps with a man. A girl will sleep with the hot guy that she doesn't really care about, doesn't see anything long term with very quickly. Yet when she's dating a guy that she does see long term, he has a lot of great qualities and she really doesn't want to mess it up, she will make him wait. She will pace herself with him because she doesn't want to mess it up. Because she knows that sleeping with him quickly could jeopardize the potential of him taking her seriously. And the reason she sleeps with the other hot guy quickly is because she doesn't care if it messes up because she's just enjoying it for the moment. However, men see this situation 
very differently. Men see sexual intimacy with a woman as the price. A woman sharing her body with him is no light thing. And because of that, the way guys look at this exact situation is that one guy didn't really have to make the effort and the patience and the investment to get the prize with you and the other guy, you're making him pull out all the stops to get there. He has to message you, spend time with you, talk to you and your friends, make an effort in other areas and only then will you have that with him. It makes this guy feel that he's second rate or worse, that he's second choice. When in actual fact, it's the opposite. Same situation, seen very differently. Men and women, we both need to make an effort to communicate in the way that the other understands. Now, because stereotypically, women tend to be better communicators, at least when it comes to their emotions, this is an area where you as a woman can lead by example. You can make a bit of an effort to try and accommodate for a way that he understands because you know how and have the capability to do so. At least until, you know, he can catch up a little bit. The next thing that really turns a guy off is when a woman is so focused on receiving instead of giving. Relationships are supposed to be reciprocal, right? Yes, it is important to have an awareness whether a guy is investing in you the way you are investing in him because that's how we build relationships, right? If I take one step, you take one step. If I take two steps, you take two steps. If I take three steps and then you don't take a step, I don't move. We don't take another step until there's a level of reciprocation on their part because that's how you meet in the middle. That's how you build the relationship. Now, I think because a lot of women have had bad experiences with guys, which I completely understand, maybe they've chosen the wrong guys in the past. Maybe they've chosen players, men who are emotionally unavailable. Maybe they've chosen men purely on lust. They then become hyper aware of whether a guy is showing real investment in them or not. And while it's important to recognize the kind of investment he's actually making, we all also have to remember that we need to show up and show a level of investment in him as well because if he's a good quality guy who's looking for something significant that's what he's going to be looking for and if a guy recognizes that a girl is so focused on what he is doing for her or what he should be doing for her it makes him feel used underappreciated and undervalued how we start is how we should need to go on so if someone is not generous with their time with their investment with their energy, the way that maybe a guy is in the beginning, assuming that he is that way, then naturally he's just gonna think, oh, well, that's the kind of relationship I would have with her, where it's just very one-sided. Now, let's be real here. I do believe it's good for a man to make the initial investment, right? I do think it's great for a guy to take the lead in this regard, you know, show some initiative, but then it has to be reciprocated in order for it to work. And it doesn't have to be in the exact same way. It can be in different ways. So for example, if he took you out to the cinema and then, you know, took you for dinner, maybe you could make an effort by going to his house and ordering takeout and maybe choosing the film. Nice, simple. You want to avoid him thinking he's getting less from you. Especially if you've expressed to him about your experiences with other guys where maybe you did put out all the stops, you did really make an effort and maybe those guys didn't appreciate it. So you've gone, okay, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. Because for the current guy that you're seeing, that makes him go, okay, well, just because one guy messed up with you before, why do I have to pay the price? You see what I mean? This isn't about right or wrong, but it's just about operating in a way that works out for you if you do want something serious with said guy. This next thing that is a major turn off and <laughs> this is my favorite one is letting people have too much input on your relationship. It's completely okay to share what's going on with the guy you're seeing with your friends or family. And if you want to get their thoughts on something, that's cool too. But if it gets so much to the point that what and how you are with a guy is completely guided by the other people around you, that's when it starts to become a bit of an issue. Like if you're happy with how things are going with said guy, and then someone goes, hey girl, uh, he should be doing this, this, and this for you. And then that almost plants the seed of resentment towards him because you go from appreciating and enjoying what you have with him to starting to resent him because of what a female colleague said he should be doing. If you're happy, then it doesn't matter what anyone else says. What works for them may not work for you in your relationship. And please avoid saying anything like, oh, well, my friend said you should be doing this or my mom told me to tell you this. There's nothing worse than feeling like you're in a relationship with more than one person. And it also makes the other person go, raw. if I share this with them then, does that mean they're gonna go report me to whoever is giving them guidance on how apparently I should be? Advice from family and friends are fine, but ultimately, make sure that the choices and decisions you make are yours alone. If you're looking for a guy who sparks up your love life, make sure you subscribe to this wonderful tribe. And as always, keep it slick.